Hello, 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 and welcome back. We are now on the command economy. So in our previous video, we did mention that uh, the command system is the one which is controlled by the government, whereby the government determines what to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce for. So let's look at now at the advantages and disadvantages you have in your command system. So we're talking about centralized control. The government is able to uh, direct resources and prioritize economic activities, which lead to coordination development according to national priorities, which means we are talking about a government that has national priorities in A. It is major forefront because we are looking at the government which is going to be answering all the fundamental economic questions of, of everyone in the economy. That's the issue of centralized control, but they have the ability to make sure that they direct specific resources to where they are needed to prioritize all the economic activities which are supposed to be coordinated, make sure that they force the development of the country. Then we have economic equality. The focus on state ownership and uh, controls aim to reduce uh, economic disparities, fostering a more equal distribution of wealth among the population. We know that uh, once we are having a free market system, there's uh, this inequality of uh, unfair distribution of, of wealth among the population, whereby the rich become much more richer and the poor become much more poorer. But looking at the command systems aims to answer to make sure that it corrects a much more uh, stable, a much more equal distribution of income among the population, whereby every economic agent is treated as an equal. Uh, that's the income equality. Then we have uh, stability in planning. So long-term planning can provide stability and predictability in economic activities. That's the issue of long-term planning, whereby you, when, once you have uh, created long, a long-term plan, you can always change it along the way by making... Um, uh, necessary adjustments so that you get to the the official uh, official official productive uh, capacity that you need as an economy. That is what we mean by strategic development and investment. Then we have what to call social services. The government can allocate resources to ensure the provision of essential services such as health, education, and social welfare. These are some of the major fundamental factors uh, services which are, are needed for development. Uh, for development economics, we have to focus on healthcare, education, and social welfare because these are the things which are crucial for the everyday economic agent. That's what we mean by social services. Then we also have to look at the avoidance of economic crisis because if you are having an economy whereby everyone has the freedom to freely enter and freely exit whenever they want, that creates an issue of instability. But when you are looking at the command system, right, it's make sure that the central planning uh, make may mitigate some of the frustrations and, and the crisis associated with the market forces, with market economies, as the government can intervene and in stabilize the economy. Because as you know, uh, the, if, if the economy is left to the operation of market forces, there is uh, the issue of frustration and crisis may, may, uh, may happen because the market forces will be allowed to operate freely. So that's why you need limited um, market forces, those that you can issue, can avoid uh, avoidance of economic crisis. So as the government, they need to be able to, to they make sure that they intervene and they stabilize the economy. Then we also have to look at the disadvantages. Uh, there's a lack of efficiency. When you look at the command system, there's uh, allocative inefficiency, there's productive inefficiency, there's also X inefficiency. They almost don't have any efficiency because when you're looking at decision whereby is uh, centrally made, they, lack, they, they lead to inefficiencies. As the government may not respond quickly to the changes in supply and demand, resulting in surplus or shortages, that's all what is characterized by a command system, whereby they characterized by severe shortages, whereby they might not know the number of people who want to pay, for example, over a given time period. So this is how the government will be limited and will lack the efficiency to make sure that it quickly responds to market forces of demand and supply. Then the issue of limited innovation is, is a key uh, backstage for the economy because you have to look at the idea that without the competitive drive of having competition taking place presents uh, a mar in market economies that presents if not being available in the, mar in the market uh, then there's a less incentive for innovation and technological advancement that's why they lack investments in technological advancement because there's no incentive to, to be innovative there is no incentive for technological advancement because there is no competition then moving on, we have uh, bureaucratic inefficiencies because if decision making is taking a long time for, for them to make decisions, they are not going to be able to respond quickly to changes that need to be made uh, along the way. 
So this the reliance on bureaucratic structures can result in red tape, corruption, and inefficiency in implementing of economic policies. Because you know corruption is one of the big, uh, one of the biggest uh, limitation, uh, one of the biggest obstacle in 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 stopping economic growth in a country because it hinders economic growth in a much more negative way. Uh, in the, there is no development that cannot take place over a very long time. Then you also have uh, consumer choices. Consumers have limited choice in terms of product and service, which you want to promote what you call consumer sovereignty. But in the command system, you don't see consumer sovereignty because they have limited choice because the government is the one that is determining what, what is produced and made available for the consumers for them to consume. So that's the limitation right there. And also have to look at risk of misallocation. The absence of market forces can lead to misallocation of resources as directions are made based on political consideration rather than market demand. That's always the problem whereby if market forces are not let out to operate with them for themselves freely, you end up making decisions based on political considerations. That's not gonna be in proportion with the, with the market forces. It's like you're playing a game with market forces. So that's that's the issue of mis risk of misallocation. If you, you, are, you are trying to operate with the absence of market forces, that will lead to misallocation of resources. Because market forces are the one who determine how or the trajectory of the economy is going to be shaped. Then we also have a stagnation, a stagnation in the availability of uh, stagnation and lack of adaptability. Adaptability. Command economies may struggle to adapt to changing conditions and then they are bit to evolve and change and uh, respond to dynamic economic changes. Because you know the world is dynamic. It's very much more like a global village with how most economies have now developed through globalization. So if you're not going to be able to respond to the dynamism of other economies, you're going to always have dynamic economic challenges as, as a country. You're not going to grow if you're having a command system led system, which is not going to make sure that you prosper as an economy. Then you also have uh, quality concerns. In the absence of market competition, they may lead less incentive to maintain high quality. There's no need to, for them to have high priority products or service quality because they already don't have any competition. Absence of competition makes sure that you don't have to maintain, you have less incentive to provide high quality products. Then you have also the issue of political influence. But this system relies on the government making economic decisions that can be influenced by political considerations rather than economic efficiency, potentially leading to suboptimum outcomes. Because that's always the, the problem with, the, with with this command system. It can separate the it can be separated from political influence because it's owned by the same system. So that's the problem of political influence. Then looking at um, our summary, in practice uh, many economies adopt a mixed approach, combining elements of both uh, command system and free market system to leverage an advantage of each while is mitigating their respective disadvantage. That's the issue of uh, understanding that most economies have evolved and say that let's look at the mixed approach whereby we, we look at the benefit of, benefit of both worlds and we get the outcome from those uh, from those decisions that we are making as as a, as, a, as a government. So the market command and the market system combined together, you can leverage the advantage and mitigate their respective disadvantages. More always making sure that you bear them in mind as you're operating your uh, as a country, move, making it that you move in an approach that promotes a much more uh, productive, that promotes productivity and also consumer sovereignty and also allocation of resources in an efficient way. So with this, I uh, thank you.